The cryptocurrency market has been taking a hit, especially with altcoins. But in this video, we're going to be giving our top best altcoins that we think are going to make it in the long term and the ones that we have the most conviction with right now. Smash up the like button, click the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to keep coming back to this channel to educate yourself on cryptocurrency. But please understand that we're not financial advisors. In full disclosure, we do hold some of the coins that we're going to be speaking about in today's video. Very special guest, Jerry Banfield, is back with us to give even more insights. But I'm going to lead things off here in this video, and I'm going to be sharing a cryptocurrency altcoin that I think I have the most conviction with right now. It's a high-risk, high-reward cryptocurrency, but it has to be Pulse chain. And the reason why it is Pulse chain is because we have seen the exact thing happen last cycle with Hex. Now, Hex is down like 99% right now from its all time lows to all time highs. Pulse chain is even under the sacrifice limit right now uh, from the sacrifice phase. It looks horrible. It looks absolutely brutal. And, you know, I remember the story though of somebody who turned, you know, $200,000 into like 2.2 million within a couple of weeks. I mean, I remember somebody else, you know, took like 20 grand and turned it into hundreds of millions of dollars with Hex. And it keeps reminding me that there is always going to be potentially a greener day in the future. And that a lot of this is just short term, fudding out manipulation. And I have a ton of conviction with Paul Chain because of the founder, Richard Hart. He has been one of the most controversial, but also one of the smartest people in crypto. And he also has built something that I think is really genuinely trying to help cryptocurrency. Paul Chain is a faster version of Ethereum. It works, you know, in my opinion, it's even cheaper right now. So, uh, you know, just being able to transact and use the chain. They also have one of the strongest communities in cryptocurrency in the, you know, whole Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X community, I believe is one of the strongest in crypto hundreds of thousands of people. And I think it's only the beginning. Why I like this project right now personally is because if you look at previous bull markets, those coins of the old, they kind of get forgotten about sometimes. But the coins of the new that haven't had their bull markets, those are the ones that could do crazy astronomical numbers. And here's the thing right now, while the prices are low, it's getting rid of all of the people who could potentially sell when the prices are high. So to me, there's more opportunity while it's high risk there's more opportunity in Pulse Chain leading off. And that is why it is definitely one that I am keeping my eye on and personally I'm holding and will continue to keep buying some even if the prices go lower. Jerry, what about you? What is a coin you have a ton of conviction with and that you believe even in the next bull cycle could even maybe break all-time highs or at least go back there and be a great steal today? Well, Joe, based on my portfolio, I have about 45% of my whole crypto portfolio is in Ethereum. Because you talk about community, Ethereum is the number one community in crypto. There's more than 50 million wallets with over a dollar of Ethereum in them, which is more than Bitcoin. It has a total value locked when you include all the ERC-20 tokens, and which include things like stable coins, and you include NFTs. The total value locked in Ethereum is almost equal to Bitcoin already. I think Ethereum actually is number one in most metrics right now. If you include daily users on all the Ethereum layer twos, it has way more daily active users than Bitcoin and even any other chain out there, despite the gas fees that can get ridiculous. Ethereum also is deflationary, which is a dream when combined with staking. If I've got a lot of money and I'm looking for an ideal investment, Ethereum takes everything I can get about a 7% APR from running a validator, and then it's in a deflationary asset. I mean, that's so much better than a crappy treasury bond or some stock that you could buy. So I see that whales are pouring money into Ethereum while a lot of retail dumps right now. And uh, Ethereum, to me, is very low risk. It's probably not going to go down that much. I'd be very surprised if Ethereum ever drops 50% below where it's at today. And yet Ethereum could easily 10X. My price target is 100,000 for Ethereum one day is completely within the realm of reasonable. And you know, another, maybe not the next bull market, but maybe the bull market after that. I see Ethereum as a very high chance of surviving too. The community's massive and uh, there's all the layer twos and all the projects that are happening and the liquidity pools that lock up Ethereum, like you talked about before, Ethereum to me just seems like a sure thing as an investment. And I want to make money with my investments. So the majority of my money's in Ethereum, which is 
the, the, the opposite in many ways of pulse chain. I'm probably not going to hit the huge multipliers in the short term with Ethereum, but I want to make sure in five, 10 years from now, I've got a lot more money than I've got today. So Joe, after pulse chain, what is the next altcoin you are most excited about? Well, Jerry, it actually has to be a meme coin. And this meme coin went absolutely crazy a couple of months ago. It's called Pepe. Now, I know, a meme coin. Joe, come on, you, you can't be serious. But let me share with you what happened in the last cycle with meme coins. In fact, the number one meme coin was Dogecoin. And that went literally from fractions of a penny all the way as high, and this is the chart right now as I'm about to show you, it went all the way as high as approximately 71 cents. So if you look at the chart here, you can see fractions of a penny, 0 0.0031 back in July of 2020, all the way as high as 71 cents. Now, could you have predicted this? Well, no, not for sure. I mean, look, anything can happen in crypto. But the point is, is that meme coins are things that are familiar with people. And the next one, I believe, that could potentially go crazy is Pepe. And the reason why I think Pepe could continue to go crazy is for a few reasons. First and foremost, there's a narrative that Pepe could actually outperform Dogecoin and Shiba Inu. And those were the coins of the last cycle. This is a newer meme coin that just launched, and it hasn't even had a bull market yet. That is why I'm more excited about it. Right now, the market cap is still high, in my opinion. I think this could definitely trend lower in the short term. But in the long run, market cap, $381 million. It's also on some of the biggest exchanges in the world. Binance, you get it on Mexi, Uniswap, KuCoin, you know, Kraken. You can get this on Crypto.com Exchange, PancakeSwap. You can get this basically anywhere. And the truth of the matter is, is that people are looking for cryptocurrency coins that absolutely go sky high. And the truth is, is that they're unwilling to take a risk when the crypto coins are low. So as I love Ethereum, and I do think Ethereum is going to do well as well, it is a lower risk, as you, you know mentioned. But also, if I'm going to take a risk at all, I might as well swing for the fence. And this is why I think meme coins, while they're crazy investments and very speculative, they're you know nine out of every 10 of them are going to go to zero. Pepe, I think, is not going to go to zero because of all the things that I just mentioned. Now, also on the website, you can see here, if you do even more research about this crypto coin, uh, you know, they basically have a tokenomics where uh, all of it's basically out there and you can, you know, uh, basically trade it on Uniswap and, uh, you know, there's no taxes. You don't need to worry about specific slippage and it's easily accessible. So uh, to me personally, if I'm looking at a coin that, I know it's crazy to say now, and but that's where the money's at in this game of crypto. You have to be the contrarian. You have to be the person that goes, oh, a, a frog coin? Come on. But people have been buying, and whales have been buying tons of this crypto coin. It hasn't seen a bull market yet. That is why I have conviction with Pepe. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this one plays out. As a price prediction, I would say if it were to go to where Dogecoin and Shiba are at, Dogecoin is at an $8 billion market cap right now. Shiba is at a 3 or $4 billion market cap right now. To me, they're in the billions. Pepe is, is just in the hundreds of millions. So could it 10x, could it uh, you know 100x from here? It's certainly possible if it were to reach and go all the way as high as Dogecoin did. And Dogecoin at its peak, 10x, that was like an $80 billion market cap. Pepe, that would put it at over 100x. So that's why I have conviction with it. And that's why I think in the next top of the bull market, you can definitely see some crazy volatility with meme coins. But Jerry, back to you. What else do you got for us? And what are some other top picks for this video? Well, I'm going to go with the original meme coin here, which is Bitcoin. Because when Bitcoin first came out, people were like, what is this internet money crap? Like, this is a joke, right? There's nothing you can do with it. There's no real value to it. I'm going to just buy and trade it. And uh, I'm going to say Bitcoin for my second pick. I know it's not an altcoin, but what I want to emphasize with Bitcoin is that with the emergence of all these layer twos, like you got Bitcoin Lightning Network, you got Chainkey Bitcoin on internet computer, you have things like Stacks, now you have Ordinals on Bitcoin. Bitcoin, to me, triggers the scarcity. And the reason you have things like Pepe Pump is because of the scarcity, because there's not that much that's actually available to buy. And if you make a significant buy, that's how the price can pump. And as long as people are holding, then the price doesn't drop. So with Bitcoin, we're seeing record low amounts of Bitcoin on exchanges. 
Miners are holding Bitcoin, which indicates they think that the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. And same as Ethereum, I see Bitcoin's practically a stable coin that also is an investment. Like to me, that's ideal. Now, if someone's watching and hearing my Bitcoin and Ethereum picks and your Pulse Chain and Pepe picks, like that could be a nice mix of, you know, stability and high risk, high reward. But I love seeing how scarce Bitcoin is getting. And uh, that's why Bitcoin is the second biggest position in my portfolio. But the question is, do I really want to buy more Bitcoin? I've got like 20, 25% Bitcoin. How much more am I going to buy though? I also see Bitcoin is really attractive as potentially a global reserve currency. And it looks like Tether is buying up a bunch of Bitcoin with their profits. So I think Bitcoin easily, we hit 100,000 in, in the next bull run alone with Bitcoin and very low chance of losing it. Which leads me to wonder, what else might somebody at this point who's like, God, Jerry said Ethereum and Bitcoin. Joe, please tell us something else that might make us some serious money in the short term. Well, Jerry, I have to go with another project that we've talked about many times on this channel. It's Zen. And the reason why it is Zen is because the founder of Zen, Jack Levin, he was Google's 21st employee, has been building and doing a lot with this project. In fact, he just announced literally a couple of days ago their own X1 blockchain update and how they're going to be basically, you know, integrating a lot of what already Zen is doing into this blockchain, how you can actually get potentially, uh, you know, more with this. They're also doing ordinals and there's doing, you know, so much more with this VMPX uh, project that is going to basically, um, you know, allow people to get access to this X1 token. There's a lot to uncover and that's a whole nother video for itself. The reason why I have conviction with Zen is because of the tokenomics itself as well. In the beginning, a lot of these crypto coins will pump and they will dump. And the reason why they will do this is because there's little liquidity and there is just little amount of people who are actually willing to buy and hold these. They're looking to just trade getting out of these coins. But Zen is very different because you can actually mint this for a small gas cost right now. But in the future, the gas cost could go a lot higher. And that's why we've seen on the chart here a ton of these moves where Zen will do something to the tune of a thousand, two thousand percent within, you know, literally within a matter of a couple of weeks. And then it will go all the way back down to those lows crashing 85, 95, you know, maybe even 99%. Now, why does this happen? And why is this happening? Well, to go deeper into this project, the reason why it's happening is because there's a lot of sell pressure, but there's also being uh, more projects that are burning more Zen. And the more Zen that is burned, the less supply, very similar to Bitcoin, Jerry. Bitcoin has a fixed supply. And there's tons of people who have lost their Bitcoin. They can't find it. They have no idea where it's at. And that right there is basically signaling that it's deflationary. But the trick is Bitcoin's actually inflationary right now. And it's going to be inflationary for another 100 years because of how it's set up with the whole mining, right? So you mine Bitcoin and then those miners basically sell it, right? Well, the same concept is happening here with Zen. And I think that's what's attracted me to this is it's trying to be a bigger, better, smarter Bitcoin and kind of get rid of the inflation within the first eight years. And then once that's done, there's no more mining and there's no more inflation where, you know, Bitcoin's inflation is going to last for quite a while. Now, the kicker to all of this is, is the halving event here that's coming in the next year. And we've always seen with Bitcoin and a lot of these other coins, as soon as the halving happens, there's typically like a buy the rumor, sell the news event, and then it's just up and to the right. And that's what basically starts the next bull market. So to me, it's only a matter of time. And I think that with these projects that I've mentioned, while they're certainly, certainly high risk, and that's kind of the you know angle that I've gone for, and you've gone for the, the lower risk ones, I think that there is potential here. And it's just a matter of time before this industry figures itself out and that the liquidity comes back. But Jerry, back to you, another coin that you have a ton of conviction with. Tell us why and what you think it would happen next. The third crypto I've got a lot of conviction about is internet computer. And this is definitely higher risk. And it's already down 99% from its all-time high right now as well. So if you go to look at it at first, it looks pretty bad. But there's the technology that powers internet computer. There's nothing else like it. It is the first in the world to have HTTPS outcalls and to be able to do everything directly on the blockchain. With Bitcoin or Ethereum, if you want an NFT, well, actually, Bitcoin ordinals are directly on chain, which is really cool. But on Ethereum, if you want an NFT and you're buying one of these on OpenSea, for example, 
you're not actually holding that NFT in most cases on the blockchain. You've got a tiny part of the Ethereum blockchain that points to your OpenSea record and then OpenSea is hosting your image somewhere on often Amazon Web Services or Interplanetary File System. Even the newer things like Solana, Avalanche, these don't hardly have anything actually held on the blockchain either. It's pretty much just the smart contracts while almost everything else runs on Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. And uh, these protocols, then you need oracles like Chainlink to actually call stuff from the regular internet, the HTTPS. Internet computer does it all on chain. Internet computer eliminates the need for oracles because you can pull it straight on chain. Internet computer eliminates the need to have a website host because you can host your entire website directly on internet computer. And what I'm seeing is developers are building dApps all over on internet computer because you don't have to use some other platform plus then internet computing just build the whole thing on internet computer and once you sign up for internet computer then you can use all these other dApps with your internet identity which it's been slow getting started and so far as an investment it's been a rug pull so far but what i see is the technology is far superior to anything else and the users are continuing to grow the developers are continuing to build I have about 20% of my portfolio on internet computer because while I could lose everything if the mass adopt if the critical massive adoption doesn't happen and if it really is a rug pull I might lose my whole portfolio on that but if this goes how I think it's going to go my shop for serious multipliers is internet computer I think I my target is $1000 for internet computer one day which is a 300x from where it's at today. So pretty much whether my portfolio will make massive multipliers or not is tied up mostly in an internet computer and my next pick. So Joe, what is your last pick here for top altcoins you've got a lot of conviction on and you think are prepared for big success in the next bull market? Well, Jerry, it has to be Hex and here is why. Hex has basically become a better store of value than Bitcoin. However, it's been much more volatile. So if you look at the price today of Hex, it has gone way high in the last couple of months to about 13 cents. And some crashing down today at 0.0077. That's absolutely crazy to see the amount of volatility. Now, there's been a lot of reasons why this has happened. Here's why I believe this project is actually going to make it in the long run. First and foremost, if you were to look back to the early days of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, when it first got started, had a very small amount of liquidity. And there was one whale who sold 30,000 Bitcoin and tried to just absolutely crush the price. But what happened after that, which was absolutely crazy, is that there was so many more buyers that it got take, you know, sucked up really quickly. And then that whale ended up now, if you look at it today, if he were to just held onto it and not done anything else 10 years later, he basically sold approximately a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin for just a few million. Now, could the same thing happen to Hex in the next 10 years? Potentially, and the reason I believe this is because I look at the fundamentals of a lot of projects as a good indicator of what's going to happen long term. A 1,288 days of flawless operation since December 2019 is a huge indicator for me. Also, the average mining length is 7.1 years. That means that people have conviction long term with this project, not just short term, but long term. Also, there's over 500,000 holders right now. The share price has been increasing. So if you understand T-shares, those continuously get harder and harder to get. Now, if the price goes lower, then it's, you know, they, the, the price of the cheese there also goes down. But at some point, all it's going to take is one or two whales to just take up all of this, you know, hex and these T-shares. And the cruel thing about hex is you actually earn interest for holding. That's one thing about Bitcoin. You don't hold interest for earning. There's there's ways that you could have done this with central or with uh other parties in like you know Celsius and you know BlockFi, they're trying to give you interest with this, but we all ended up, you know, we all know how that ended and it didn't end up well. Hex is a smart contract that is decentralized. You own your own keys, you hold your own crypto. So to me, while the price has been incredibly volatile towards the up and the down, hex went 10,000 times up and now it's crashed back down to crazy lows from what we've been seeing. But again, if a coin has gone up 10,000 times, it can certainly go down low and it could potentially go even lower than what we're seeing right now. But imagine in the next bull market, could it potentially rocket up higher again? Well, if there's not a lot of liquidity and there's more people that are coming in, I believe that it potentially could happen. 
So to me, volatility is the price that you pay for gains as well as uh, for, for the price going up and down. So if you're not willing to stomach the volatility, these coins that I mentioned today are probably not for you. But if you're looking for those gains, I truly do believe in these coins. And that's why I'm sharing them with you. But as I also shared, nobody knows what could happen with any of this. So that's why it's so important that you never risk more than you can afford to lose. But Jerry, give us one more to end this video. What do you think is one more crypto that you could talk about here that you have conviction with for the next bull cycle? Joe, before I share mine, I have a question for you about Hex because there's now Hex on Ethereum and there's Hex on Pulse Chain. I'd be interested to know what do you see differences and similarities in the future for Hex on Pulse Chain versus Hex on Ethereum? And for investing, like which is there one that's more attractive than the other? Well, that's a great question. And there's been a lot of controversy about this. And I will say this, the price of Hex on Ethereum versus the price of Hex on Pulse Chain is different right now. So you can see right now that the price of PHEX is sitting at a penny, which is 0 0.0125, whereas EHEX is sitting at 0 0.007792. Now, the market at the time of this recording is valuing the Pulse Chain Hex more than it's valuing the Ethereum Hex. And this is because of the fees and it's just because it's over on Pulse Chain, there's more liquidity there. And that's just what they're valuing more right now. However, what is interesting and why I think that the Ethereum Hex isn't going to completely go to zero and die out is because if you actually were to buy the Ethereum Hex today, you could actually earn more APY because there's less people staking and less people in the ecosystem. And it's also cheaper. So if people are just looking at those two metrics, they're like, well, I want to buy the cheaper one, right? And I want to stake that and earn more APY. Not only is it cheaper, but it's also that. Now there's fees associated with this. And that's why people are moving away from Ethereum and going over to Pulse Chain because Pulse Chain, the, cheap, the, the, the staking fees are only like you know, fractions of a penny. We're on Ethereum, still a couple bucks to get in and out of this. So to me, th there is a lot that's going to happen with this ecosystem. I think it's going to fluctuate up and down, back and forth and they're ultimately going to rise and fall together. That's exactly what we've seen. We've seen PHEX go down, and we've also seen EHEX go down. We've also seen PHEX go up, and we've also seen EHEX go up. So to me, they're pretty much bonded at this point. There is some differentiation between the two prices, but I think overall, you know, between which one you buy and which one you sell is totally up to the user and what you feel more comfortable with. The market has been cho choosing PHEX right now as the one that's been stronger, but as I've known in markets, they like to do funky things. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Ethereum Hex be overvalued and get over and be valued more than PHEX at some point. But ultimately, I think they're going to you know, go back and forth. Hopefully that helps, Jerry. Back to you, though. What do you got for us to round out the video? Thanks for answering that, Joe. The last crypto I'm holding on to is Solana because I'm looking for the biggest winners in the next few cycles like how Bitcoin just rocked the first few cycles. Ethereum has been amazing. I'm looking for what is my best pick for the next generation beyond Ethereum. Really low transaction fees, really fast transactions. And I'm, I'm into Solana because I realize I could be wrong about internet computer. If I'm wrong about internet computer, the next best option I see is Solana. Solana, the only thing with more daily active users than Solana is Ethereum, and that's if you add all the layer twos on Ethereum into its total users. Solana has recently had Render, which has done really well this year, move over, drop its layer one, and move on to Solana. You've also seen Helium move on to Solana. Solana, to me, looks like it's got a good chance to be one of the most adopted chains in the future. These third-generation Ethereum killers are very competitive and Solana looks like it's leading and it's on pace to stay ahead. That said, there's a lot of uncertainty with what happened with FTX and Alameda investing in Solana and the state's tokens, which is why Solana is the smallest position out of the big four in my portfolio. That said, I would like to make 100X on something and not wait five or 10 years for it. And I'd think between internet computer and Solana, one of those has a very good shot of 100Xing. So that's what I've got for you, Joe. And I'm really interested to see we check back in on this video in a year, a couple years, 
how how things went. Well, definitely, Jerry, and I definitely would agree with all the things that you've said in this video. But if you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and also make sure to follow both of us on all of our social medias. And if you want even more premium content, click those links down below. We have premium products for you, and we can't wait to continue to share even more and just basically update you on what's happening with crypto in the future. So it will be interesting, Jerry. Only time will tell what will happen with these crypto coins. And let's see what the market decides. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.